bars in a ring. Man, I go hard like Stan Tan. Good evening and welcome to another episode of Mugger. This evening I'm joined by the usual suspects. I'll go around and introduce them all. Seb, freshest trim on road. How you doing? Oh man, you know I had to, I had to, I had to get uh, prim and proper for today's pod, man. There's a lot to discuss. Yeah, I respect it. Some people are saying that also it's interesting that the light has also gone up in mm. conjunction with you getting a trim. Not me though. Some people, maybe some people you? Have, no, people have PM'd me and say it's interesting. <laughs> okay. It's interesting okay. we can see Sebi a bit clearer today. Okay. I, I, I reserve judgment. Mm. Uh, Michael, always good to see you. No trim because obviously for reasons we won't mention. But how you doing? Oh, God, you can't see the trim. You can't see the trim, man. I've <laughs> got it just for the pod as well. You can't see it. <laughs> Good time, bro. Oh, um, man. Timmy, yeah, how we yeah. doing, man? What's going on, bro? Good time, Yeah, good, yeah, good, man. good. Always, always masked up, always protected, yeah? Trust me. Good. Elijah, clearly repping off our fallen soldier in the background. Hey, how you man. doing? I'm good. It's 9 a.m., but obviously, just got to respect <sighs> the man yeah. who, yeah. you know... The man, some call him a, a, a myth as well. Hey, he's a man, the myth, the, the, the legend, or whatever, you, whatever you want to call him, man. Cool. Uh, oh, Reeves, how you doing, man? Yeah, man, I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. It's been an up and down week. It's cool. Literally, literally, but we'll get into it. Before we start, I'm just going to go through and give the usual plug. So first, I want to plug uh, our Patreons. There's about uh, quite a few of you now. So thank you very much for supporting us thus far. We just recorded a tactical analysis of the game against Palace that will be going on this afternoon. That's assuming you're listening to this on Tuesday morning. We're going to be dropping another two to three pieces of content uh, throughout the back end of this week. Um, For those of you who are YouTube subscribers, the pod will be up on YouTube. Make sure when you're watching the pod that you're also subscribing to our YouTube channel so you can get that notification for all the pods coming through. Uh, Discord, 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 Discord. I think at this point, everyone has been on Discord at some point, basically. It's mental in there. Um, the live match day chat pop off properly. So if you're not there already, make sure you sign up, create a profile. And finally, finally, obviously, because we start off the week, we're always the ones who bring the good news. This Sunday, we are going to be having a live show after the games live show will start at 7 p.m. That will be held across Zoom. It's free for all patrons who have at least the five pound package. And if you're not a patron and you want to attend a live show, that will be five pounds. So, you know, you do the maths. Um, we'll be setting, putting out the flyer tomorrow. And yeah, hope to see as many of you there as possible. It will be Mugai, it will be Coppend, it will be Touchy Gunas, it will be Chessie Hour, and we'll even have the Spurs boys on as well. Cool. And um, with that being said, let's get into it. Let's start with yesterday's game, boys. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> going into it, I think we all said that we didn't mind losing that game as long as we rested players. We lost. Um, whether we rested players or not, that's quite debatable. But I'm going to start with you, Elijah. What were your thoughts on yesterday's performance? Um, it's a pretty weird one, if I'm honest with you, because in many regards, it's very similar to what we saw against Southampton in that many of the things we were upset about that after, we were upset about after that game was exactly what Chelsea kind of did. It was more so their high press didn't allow us to play out, um, barely got our front, our forward players involved. Um, but, the, but the problem was with the rotated team where we had Fred in and obviously we're playing with a back three um, it was just even harder. So we had less targets to hit up top. So it was even harder for us to get out. And we had less ability f- to get through the middle with the lack of Pogba in, in there. So the fact that we were able to get till half, to virtually halftime at 0-0 was pretty lucky. But that's the, that's kind of how most of our games versus Chelsea have gone. We've, we've actually rode our luck and then we've managed to create something out of nothing. And then, obviously, it all changes when Maguire collides with Bailly. Utterly stupid that Maguire comes all the way across to deal with that when it was going bit, it was going bit, bit behind him. And then, yeah, from then on, it was just mayhem. The first goal, 
it's it uh, the first goal it was just a combination of those people's thoughts where it it, it it actually looked like Maguire still thought he was playing as the middle centre back because it was far he was too far across and he was ahead of Lindelof and Wambisaka. So by the time the cross does come in, he's not in a position to clear out the cross. So that's the first mistake. Obviously Lindelof letting Giroud in front of him when you all know trademark Giroud is getting in front closer and flicking it. And then the and then the hey the save was perfect, quite frankly. But that's been something that's been so symptomatic of the season. Um, but yeah, I, I think what Oli done in changing the shape just before half time and after that long break, it was it was just a combination of the things we we're complaining about with Southampton was just poor tactically and mentally was just very weak. It was obviously having Bayi go off the the the, the long. Um, Interval as well. It would it would rattle a few people just before that we had the Martial thing, where we should have got a free kick at least. But it was just yeah, it was just poor. It was just poor goal to concede just before half time. Then the second half we see the goal we concede as well. I think that Maguire and Lindelof should press Mount more. Poor ball from Williams in, in, into the middle, but then De Gea should just be saving that, and it's just pretty perfect. And then the third goal again is just, once again, a player getting in front of our centre-back, Maguire, this time. And because of that, Maguire's scrambling. He, put, puts, he puts a toe in it because he doesn't know what is behind him. And he deflects it past the hair. But overall, it was a very poor, poor performance. But not too much different to what we saw versus Southampton. And um, yeah, it, it, it really just shows why we had to play our first team continually over and over again. Because you saw with Fred... If Fred doesn't have a run of games to build up his form, he's not. He's not the guy. Williams, I think it was pretty irresponsible of um, Solskjaer to play Williams because, I mean, he was. He, I mean, he was. He just wasn't fit. He was. It was a big game to bring 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 it back back into. He's barely played since since the restart. So I think that was just pretty pretty irresponsible to to be honest. Um, James is a awful awful, awful player. Just had to put put that out there, um, and yet, yeah, Bruno as well. I mean, it's just it's getting that guy time. Doesn't get arrest. He does not get arrest. Does he? He, yeah, he does get arrest, but just just on him, I think it's getting pretty tiring now because there there are times where we generally need him to hold on to hold hold on to the ball, and he will fling it left, right, and, and center, and it just mounts the pressure on us, and like. He's he's been doing this since since he's he's come here, but it's getting worse and worse. And I think that might be a symptom of him being tired and just trying to get out of there as soon as possible. But yeah, it was just a put and special. Uh, it has there has to be a special mention to Pogba as well because that second half cameo is up there with some of his stinkers because he was truly truly awful. Nothing was going right for him. He looked tired just stepping onto the pitch, which is very concerning, but it's understandable given that he was basically out for 10 months. He's played game, played two, two games a week for three weeks. Um, so it's understandable why he's tired, but like I always say, there's a standard he has to meet. And for the last three games now, he hasn't met them. So that's a big concern. But yeah, it was just a pretty poor performance. Even the, even the penalty, I mean, it was just poor from Chelsea just to give it away. It wasn't even good play. And yeah, yeah, it was just poor, poor all, all around, to be honest. Cool. Um, X, I want to say, Sebi, uh, we wanted to rest players, like I mentioned to Elijah, but do you think that manner of defeat has an impact on the lads for the last two games? Yeah, possibly, but I, I, you know what? I feel like, yeah, I feel like the defeat is going to have an impact, but I feel like the biggest thing is something that Elijah just touched on. It's just the fatigue. I feel like we was trending that way anyway. All it took was a team with better quality than the teams that we've been playing um, against over the you know last two, three games to actually punish us. And that's what they've done because if, you know, we, we played, again, we played like that against Southampton and, 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 and like the last two, three games we played poor. So yeah, it just took a team to kind of punish us. Um, for me, my thing is, this is exactly what happened last last year. So last year, we're in exactly the same scenario. Yeah. So if we haven't learned 
from last year, then we have no hope. But on top of that, okay, cool. People can like question Oli's credentials. Everybody has their own individual um, opinions on Oli, which is fine or whatever. But for two games to get into the Champions League, if the players can't get up for two games, you still you got to look at yourself, bruv. Like you are elite professional footballers. If you guys can't get up for two games, two wins, and you're back in the Champions League, everything becomes easier. Two draws, two draws, two draws, two draws, and you're back in the Champions League. So if you can't get up for two, at least two draws, then again, we don't deserve it, and um, we'll be set back another four or five years, really. Um, but yeah, as a lad just said, whatever four or five years. Explain that, sir. Reason why I say that is because I feel like if we get back into the Champions League, we make key signings this year, whether mm-hmm. it's free, because we're we're used to we're used to saying every every year we say we need four signings, we need four signings, we need four mm-hmm. signings. But whether it's we get free, and that obviously adds to our squad depth and everybody's refreshed for next season, at least we'll have the money to do so. So again, the fifty million pound from Adidas, which will be going if we do not get into the Champions League, coupled with COVID, with no revenue, yeah, coupled with the Glazers don't really put money in themselves, and us missing out on Champions League revenue again, I feel like that's crippling. And then the reason why I say three, four years is because Chelsea are now strengthening. You know, they're blowing the bag. They've got the bag from Hazard. Their owners on all types of stuff. You, you, you just, just got 15 million for uh, for Hazard winning the league. What yeah, for, a joke. For, what a mean? joke. My man scored <laughs> one goal, but he they, they got extra. They got extra 15 million. So, <laughs> so you've got that, yeah. And then you've got um, Man City. They're going to be angry. Pep's got to want his vengeance. So, you know, they're going to be blowing the bag. Mm. Liverpool, they're already better than us. So, whether they blow the bag or not, we still have to catch them. Mm. Big gap, yeah. Big, 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 big gap. And then you've got teams like Spurs that want to come back. Arsenal want to come back. So if we do not add to this squad and it's the same depth because we managed, so because we didn't manage to get into the Champions League, I can't see us getting back into the top four or challenging for at least four or five years. But if we do get into the Champions League, get the revenue, get the money, and the players, all because we're becoming more and more attractive, but I think that the Champions League now is just going to tip it over. And then once we get there, I feel like certain players will want to come and they will actually force their way out to come to us as we're hearing J- Jadon Sancho wants to leave Borussia Dortmund or whatever. But yeah, I feel like that will happen more and I feel like we'll be able to compete um, you know, within the next one, two years rather than mm. four or five years. Um, guys, I'm going to go around and ask all of you this. If you're Pogba, do you sign a new contract at the end of the season? If we... Like, no, actually... If you were offered a new contract now, if you're Pogba, do you sign it? Now? Yeah, right now. No, not now. How about, sticky, how about you? Sticky, how about, sticky. Would you sign it to me? If you're Pogba? No. I wouldn't uh, sign it even if we get top four. Interesting. Why not? Because I just think he's better than our team. I don't think that... I don't think that um, in the next like two, three years... We're gonna close the gap enough to win a league or Champions League, even if he's at his best, even if we've got a Sancho that's at his best, even if we've got Grealish at his best, and uh, Martial and obviously Rashford and Greenwood are improving every day. I just feel like he's um, he's got better bets elsewhere, like going to a team like Real Madrid, who are already Championship ready, they're already um, Champions League ready, and um, Obviously, they've just won the league where they are. So, him going somewhere like that, he just fits in straight away and he's competing straight away. This project, we don't know how long it's going to take. We don't know if the players are going to hit the upward trajectory that we expect them to. And I think Mm -hmm. at this stage of his career, he needs assurances rather than guesswork. So, if I'm him, I'm not signing that new contract unless he's got serious, serious faith in in the lads to, to push on. Uh, anyone disagree with Timmy there? Not totally. Uh-huh. I think if I'm Pogba, I'm signing. I, if if I am signing a new contract, it would have to be with a release clause, because just just to make it safe, so that if we see after the season that the, these guys aren't going to reach the the levels, then there's a 
benchmark where you can go. Because if not, then you, you United can just turn around and say we want this extortion, this extortion amount, and then he can't do anything. Mm. So yeah, how I'm much do you think his release clause would be? If, I, 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 I'm, do Premier League team are Premier League teams allowed to do release clauses? I'm sure they. Yeah, 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 they are. Yeah, um, but if I was me, if I was him, I'd wait and see. Like, if we make top four, if we win the Europa, sign Sancho that shows that the team is an upward trajectory and he obviously loves the club he loves the team he wants to be a part of any success that we have and that that would be very good for his legacy as well if Pogba's a success at United that would be better for his legacy than going to Real Madrid and being a part of an already successful team you know what I mean Mm. so there's loads of benefits of signing that new contract but like Timmy said he also doesn't have all the time in the world you know what I mean so you don't really have time to be waiting four or five how does he now 26, 27? 20, 27. 27. 27, fam. The mm-hmm. next contract's a big one. Yeah, mm-hmm. so 27. If he signs this contract, this is really going to be it's like... tied down, basically. ...contract of his career, probably. Yeah, that's, that's, that's so, the last big one. Mm-hmm. If, if, if I was him, I'd wait maybe until... If we make Champions League, if we get Sancho wrapped up and we start making some other positive moves, then he could see that the club's going in the right direction. I feel like if we miss out on the Champions League, it's a disaster. Mm. Even, um, we keep forgetting that we're still in the Europa League as well, so we can still make it through then. I, yeah. I'm pretty... I'm pretty I'm, I would say I'm 95% sure we'll make, we'll make it. Like, we have to win, yeah. what, one of our next two games? Mm. We only have to win one of our next two games and we'll make it. If we can beat West Ham comfortably, and I'm talking like 4-5... Free, uh, uh, five, five, free five, five, we're in the Champions League. So that means, allows us that a 2-0 loss. That, yeah. that, that means... Yeah. That means... Um, that, means Leicester. that means Leicester would have to beat us by four goals, which isn't going to happen. No, 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 no. no, no because remember, for every goal they score, we have one taken away. So oh, yes. If we, if we oh, beat... Yeah. Let's say we beat West Ham 4-0. If they beat us 2-0, they go through... They go no, they don't. The Timmy, no, 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 the goal no, no, difference no. is equal now. The goal difference yeah, is so equal. If they, so if we win 4-0, they scored more goals, goals, goals than us. No. Yeah, they scored. Scored. If they no. beat us 2-0... Oh, goal scored. Yeah. No. Okay. They will, um, yeah, so they will finish above us, even if it's the same goal difference, because they've scored more goals. Wait, so um, that ain't happening. We have to be very careful. If Leicester beat us, it'll be like 2-1 or something like that. Anyway, it'll be a dumb result. We'll give it away in like the last minute or something like that. They, Leicester um, aren't running us out of here. They're not... Yeah, if we play like we played yesterday, boys. <laughs> Leicester can't bring that perf- kind of performance out of us with it's all due respect. Um, Michael, let's talk about a more positive game. Um, well, I guess a more positive result, should I say. Uh, the 2-0 against mm. Palace. Um, what were your thoughts on, on that game, on that performance? Obviously, we were coming off the loss against, uh, well, the draw. I keep calling it a loss. The draw against it Southampton. Feels like a loss. That felt like, like a, loss. a loss. So a lot was riding like on that. Um, what, what did you think of mm. the performance? I felt that, like, of George, George, I only caught the second half of it. I think that's the first half. But I thought mm. we were a bit more competitive. Like, to be honest, like, it was just good to, I would have accepted any performance that day. It was just we just needed to get the result against uh, mm. Crystal Palace because it was such a low blow that last minute loss draw whatever we're gonna call it against Southampton that we just needed to bounce back and it was good to see some link up play with Rashford and Martial but I think they just reinforces the fact that those two are literally when it comes to it when it comes to scoring goals obviously Greenwood helps out but them two are really been carrying us for the last few years and uh, I think we were saying it in the chat earlier in the week that it's embarrassing that we have to rely on the two guys to sort of carry us through. And they've been doing it for a long time now. Um, mm. And then, yeah, it's good to see their link up. Their link up throughout Rashford and uh, Marsha. When they link up, it's exciting. It's exciting. They have, the have a very good, they they have a very good well. connection. They have a very good connection. Very good. Very good. Obviously, I've, the, the comparisons to Colin York are quite simple to make. And they look for each other. It's not one of them sort of ones where that someone proper service that I think they share the love, which is what you want to see from strikers. So yeah, mm. it's just important to bounce back. We got lucky though. Obviously, like I'll be real honest, that Lindelof and Zaha, for me that's was that a pen. penalty. But that was uh, a pen, yeah. for me, yeah, for me it's a pen. But obviously mm. the maybe we got our old Man United ways where we get results in our favor. Fergie's been about. Fergie's been about, isn't it? I seen yeah. him at the Sutton game. Yeah, he's still about 
<laughs> he's, he's still got that influence. I was watching, so I was watching the Man United game when we played Arsenal in 04. We beat him 2 0. And Vinicius scored a penalty. And I remember they, we should have, Gary Neville should have got sent off twice. She would have brought me back to that game, in it, where <laughs> like, we just get Man United will get decisions in our favour, in it. Um, That's, football yeah, heritage, it just, That's football heritage, man. That's football let's heritage. Let's respect it. <laughs> no, but let's not be cheeky so, now. Yeah. Yeah, brother. Yeah, it was just good to just get the, the, the three points, definitely. Mm. Timmy, what did you think of the Palace game? Obviously, I can tell that the, 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 the Chelsea game has really put you in a dampener. So it's kind of been a dampened sandwich. It's, you got Sutton, you got the Palace win, then you got Chelsea in the middle. But in the middle of the, the Sutton and Chelsea games, you got the Palace game. What did you think of the performance? Um, to be honest, we haven't been good for about two weeks. And in that time, we probably played about four games. Um, we weren't very good against Villa. Obviously, Southampton weren't good. Palace weren't good. Chelsea weren't good. But um, I'm all about results at this stage of the season. Um, I just need us to win. I don't care how scrappy it is. I don't care that we don't play well. Um, I just want us to win, which we did. Obviously, Rashford and Martial were unbelievable against um, Palace. I feel like people, people keep saying that uh, we shouldn't have to rely on Martial and Rashford to bail us out because we've got Bruno and Pogba, and um, I think that's a pretty—I think that's a pretty unfair thing to say. I think, due to the level that we know that Martial and Rashford should be hitting, I feel like they should have more pressure on them. I feel like they should be looked to 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 um, get us results. Especially Martial, the guy's going to be 25 soon. So it's not like he's a baby anymore. Um, obviously, Pogba's our best player. Obviously, Bruno uh, makes, things, makes things happen as the most advanced midfielder. But <clears throat> for Rash and Martial to win us games, I don't think, it, I don't think we, sh- we should look at Pogba and Bruno and think, oh, you bums or whatever. We know that they didn't play well. But the fact that they didn't play well, Martial and Rashford can step up, for me, is a, is a good thing. Um, especially um, Rashford against Palace. I think he was probably our man of the match, for me anyway. Um, he, the, the kid didn't put a foot wrong, man. He didn't put a foot wrong. And if he can continue playing like that, we've got a serious player on And I see Sebi smiling. Obviously, bro, you know, <laughs> I've been there loving Rashford as well, don't I? <laughs> but um, if he could just continue like that, like, we, we haven't really got too much to worry about um, on that left-hand side going forward. But, um, you know, yeah, Pogba was bad and Bruno was bad. Put it down to tiredness, put it down they've to... They've both had a bad week. They've both had a bad week. Yeah, they've, the in thing, fact, the they've th- been bad for a while. But the fact that we've got Marsha and Rashford to bail us out when we need... I, like I said, I don't want to say bail us out. I think they're just mm. doing their job like they're supposed to. Mm. They should have more pressure on them. They sh- we shouldn't look at Pogba to decide games for us. Do you know what it is? I think when you think of, of the Sutton game and Pogba not controlling the midfield, mm. it, it means that the end, we're not controlling the midfield. It means we're more likely to concede goals because our defence isn't very strong, which means then it is literally them having to bail us out because the midfield isn't necessary. Like, Pogba shouldn't, be that poor. So, fine, Pogba doesn't mm-hmm. necessarily have a game mm-hmm. where right. he's fi- firing on. But even an average Pogba sees us through most yeah, of these games. Should be, should at the be. moment, at this moment in time, he's worse. At, against Sutton, he was worse than average. I say against Palace, he was probably average. And against Chelsea, again, when he came on, he was worse than he's average. Yeah, yeah. yeah, When he's playing like that and people are looking to those, so I can understand why people are like, yeah, it's, a, it's a bit tough. When we know, we, we give him the accolade as our best player. Your best mm. player is very difficult for any team, regardless of where your best player is playing. It's very difficult for any team to win if your best player is having that poor of a game. It's like having a bad game. Understandable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Football's a weak. Football's a weak link sport. So basically, any team's only as strong as their worst player in it. And if your best yeah. player is playing like your worst player, while your worst players are still playing to their normal level, it's tough. Because remember, for the strikers, they have to wait. They have to wait to the for the ball to get to them. So. The game against... The game against in, yeah, go on. No, I was going to say, in games like um, against Palace and the smaller teams, it's almost as if Pogba... I don't want to um, make any excuses for him because he shouldn't be poor ever anyway. But 
if there are if there's ever times to be as poor as he's been, it's in games that our quality should see us through rather than um a big game like against Chelsea yesterday. Yeah. No reason for for him hiding there. You, you just can't excuse it. However, against a team like Palace, it's like if that's gonna be the game that he plays poor in, cool. We can accept because that. we've got so much more quality over the pitch that we should be able to, with Pogba on one leg, we should still be able to beat Crystal Palace. Do you know what I mean? So, for me, like, um, he, him and Bruno were singled out, like, majorly. I mean, what were BT Sport doing, by the way, giving Bruno man the match? Because that was... <laughs> well, that we'll was the most that. criminal... We'll touch, we'll <laughs> touch on this. What, what, what's going on with Bruno at the moment? In fact, let's just go into that. What's going on with Bruno at the moment, to me, is... It's scary because, I mean, we've spoken about it on this pod. We've spoken about it on the main pod. And I think at this moment in time, it's not even, and I think one of you may have tweeted it as well, it's not even a pro-Bruno agenda. It's an anti-Pogba agenda. If Bruno was playing in any team and his midfield partner was not Paul Pogba, he would not be getting the accolades that he's getting at this moment in time. It's even when he plays badly, they find a way. It's a, it's a we all want, we all, we all like Bruno because he makes things happen. You know, it's when he tries mm. things and the vast majority of those things that he's trying is not working. The commentators don't seem to notice at all, and for him to get man of the match against Palace is is disgraceful. It's disgraceful, really. I just wanted to hear you guys' thoughts on that. Really, I it it, it got me mad because that's probably Rashford's best game since he came back. Mm. Goal and an assist, nothing, nothing. Absolutely nothing from the commentators yeah. or Rashford. How he's done coming off a long injury layoff, playing every single game, how he's deciding games, how he's influencing games. Is Bruno's this. Bruno saved his team. Bruno's brought this team up to a new level. Bruno's rah, rah, rah. Bruno's this. Bruno. I listen, I get it. Bruno had a play that, Bruno played a part in both of the goals. We can't deny that. He played a... But like, the first goal, it was a good bit of link-up play between him and Martial. Then mm. he passed the ball into Rashford. It wasn't even a good pass. Like, <laughs> like, Rashford still had a lot to do. Yeah, Rashford like, rescued it and scored a great goal. The second one, it was a good pass into Rash again, but Rash again had to have the wearable and the skill and the delicacy to lay that off perfectly. That was such before. a beautiful layoff, man. Where was Rashford's man of the match? You know what I mean? Like, and it's like when, when Bruno's getting all of this praise, it's like, it's like they're doing it to erase all the good things that Martial's doing, all the good things that Rash was doing all the good things that Pogba was doing. And that, and, and that just doesn't sit right with me. And, mm. like, and it's like, us, are these players, like Marshall and Pogba, especially like Rashford, Rashford is kind of cool because he's English. Like, so the media will kind of go easy on him. He gets, his, Rashford, he gets his accolades here and there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rashford and um, Marshall and Pogba, when things aren't going good, they, even when things are going good, they still get their criticisms and their yeah. rah, rah, rah. Like, Marshall's mm. in the best form of his life. We still have Jamie Carragher and Gary never talking about United need a centre-forward. Rah, rah, rah. So, when they're playing well, where is their... Where where's is their, their flowers? Where's their flowers? You know what I mean? <laughs> Bruno's getting it when he plays well and when he plays bad. <laughs> it just it, it rubs me the wrong way. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, guys, yeah. wait, you guys are not even deep in here. You see the one that you said that uh, Bruno's involved for uh, Marshall's goal. That was all Rashford from the start. Rashford exactly. went past three players. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, Rashford the ball in his own half. <laughs> <and> <laughs> guys, Rashford beat like three man, passed it to Bruno, made the run, and then, and then passed it to Martial. That was mm. all Rash. That was all Rashford. Like Bruno was just yeah, like he was mm-hmm. there, but he, he wasn't the main component of that. But yeah, no, he was funny. like he was like the flipping. You know, like when you get like a, a meal, yeah. Yeah. He was like the lemonade. Yeah, of the, of the uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he, he was the lemonade. Uh, you know I mean? Rashford, uh, Rashford was like the burger. Marshall was the fries. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, facts, bro. Man was the sauce, bro. He just added some tomato ketchup or something. Yeah, it's, yeah no, it's hilarious. Mm. And, and it's, you know, it's almost you... as if Go on. It's almost as if they're doing with Bruno what they do with Henderson. Apart from Henderson deserves deserves it more than Bruno does because since we've come back from lockdown, I think Bruno for the first three games, so um, Spurs, Brighton and Sheffield United, yeah. Spurs, Brighton, Sheffield United, he was like crazy in all three of those games. And then since then, he's like tailed off. But it's like the media don't want to tell him, that don't want to 
they just don't want anyone to know. Like all the bad performances are going under the radar. And it's like clearly um, for Liverpool, Mane has been their best player all season. But the side stepping him and giving Henderson all the credit, and it's like even everyone can see Robert what you're Salah. doing. Even Salah, even Van Dijk, even Trent, they've all been better than Henderson. But it's like once the media have zoned in on the one person that they want to um, to big up then that's just what that's they're going to keep doing. It's mm. the same way that when they want to vilify a player, they're going to do all they can to vilify him. Um, ego like Pogba, Sterling, um, once upon a time. Do you know what I mean? And I guess it's just something that we're just going to have to live with because then at this point... No, I don't no know we don't have to live with do. No, we don't have to live with That's why That's that's why we're here. That's why we're here because they won't have these conversations on their platform because as far as they are concerned... Bruno has been perfect since he got here, and the only reason where where we are now is because of Bruno. So every time we have an opportunity to speak out about it, we we speak out and we hold people accountable for their biases. Because it wasn't two three weeks ago where they were talking about a report on how they um, commentate on players of um, ethnic minorities and the differences, and they're like, you know, yeah, we have to do a better job. And it's like, okay, cool, but I'm seeing you in your day job still doing the same things you were doing before. Neville comes on and he's like, oh, I should have protected Raheem Sterling when he was getting that abuse um, as an England player, etc., etc." But I'm watching you and your biases every single time Manchester United play, trying to create friction between Marshall and Rashford. But you can clearly see that they're boys and every time they're out there, they're supporting each other. You, oh, it just grinds mm-hmm. my gears, man. And what it also does is it makes us not appreciate Bruno as much. And he hasn't done anything wrong because Bruno doesn't go out there and ask these guys to hype him up. I think it was an interview a few games ago where they were saying, are you enjoying playing with Pogba? And he was like, yeah, 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 that's cool. And, you know, it's great. He's a great player. But it's not just us two, you know? There's McTominay and there's Fred. And, yeah, he was lying. But... You see, he's a a team player, isn't it? Yeah, he's a team player, so you can see that he's happy because you know they, Tommy and Fred may not even necessarily believe that, but the fact that he is happy to share that spotlight with them and wants their names to be up there as well shows you the type Mm. of man he is. And to be honest with you, from my perspective, I have probably been taking out taking it out on him a bit more than I should have, and even in talking about it this on this pod. I've realised that myself. And it's not his fault. He's going out there and he plays how he still plays at Sporting. And for better or worse, it works sometimes. It doesn't work sometimes. But he's doing what he, he's doing what he can in it. And he tries every game. And you see that he puts mm. in a shift defensively, regardless of if it's working or not. You're seeing him still tracking back in like the 85th minute against Chelsea. Is that like his fourth, fifth start? Has he not started? Is that a game he hasn't started since we came every back? Game. He every started game. every single game. So, no, you know, no, no, there's, no, there's no, some no. things that he's not so good at, but there's a lot more things that he is good at. And I think it's, uh, it's for us to appreciate that. But when I think he just guys, needs to simplify a bit. I feel like he doesn't know any other way to play. And that's a coaching thing, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's for, that's for the coach. <laughs> that's for the coach. That's for the coach. I, I wonder how much they use virtual reality when they're training footballers. Almost like when you see this picture, do not, when you see two yeah. matches, <laughs> do not <laughs> try. That, 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 that's like, that side of coaching is like film. It's like, what, it's like watching mm, like the matches. Game film, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Decisions you make, what decision you could have made instead. Like, it's a study in the film, studying mm. a game. You know what I mean? It's, it's something you can coach out of a player. But mm. I think the thing about Bruno, like, he, he sometimes he tries the first thing that comes into his head when he hasn't really like yeah. assessed all his yeah, options. That's, that's, why I, that's, that's why I like him to like have some virtual reality goggles on, yeah, and he can actually see the help. And then okay, he's got a ball at his feet. Okay, do what comes naturally to you. No, you see what happened there. Let's go mm. back and watch yeah. that again. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> you could have gone there. Pogba was free. Sure was on the overlap, and yeah, you, mm. you, 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 you lot are right. But I like him. I like what he's about. I, I like what he's about. I like the dimension that he, he, he brings to our team. And yeah, For sure. where everybody's looking heavy on their legs and they look like they're falling apart, for some reason, he's showing only something in training that means he's starting every single game. Every single game. Mm. Cool. Um, apart from Bruno, there's a couple more players I want to speak to you guys about. I probably will be able to guess, but let's get into it. Uh, DDG. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Michael. Um, listen, we've been talking about right. DDG all season. We've been talking about DDG all season. Um, where do you mm. stand with him at this point? It's he's, uh, his name is going before him right now. Because based on his performances, he shouldn't be playing. 
basically like he he howled like two howlers yesterday, two howlers like the second goal, bro. Like that is routine. I'm not even a goalkeeper, but even I can see that you went to put your body behind the ball when a shot's coming in. And the fact they tried to parry it and his hand, his hand, his hand, sorry, was too weak. Like ah. Oh. And that was just What's after happened the to his wrist? So what has thinking. actually happened to his wrist? Like, it's actually just like, I, forget I the agility know. and reflex. Just his physical wrist. Like, consistently, um, the ball is hitting his hair. And rather than being strong and the ball coming the up, it's closed, going backwards. It? The gym's closed. <laughs> the gym's closed. I don't know. Like, <laughs> bro, man, laugh about like that their own gym. I don't get it. Like, seriously, <sighs> I, I really forget what's happened to these shot stoppers. But that was the big selling point. The fact that when a shot came, you were saving. I think Teddy put a little infographic in a group about like 2017, 18, you must have saved like 40 goals. The last two seasons, zero. Like, I think teams know you shoot at him, but you've got a good chance of going in. And, that, and that's the problem. And when our defence isn't that good, and when you break past our midfield, it's, it's scary. It's so scary. And it's almost like you would expect him to make these saves and he's not making it. So mm. that's where, I guess, obviously, just to bring it back to Timmy's point, it, that's where a whole, the whole of Martial thing comes from me. Because like, we're having to literally outscore to you because the defence and the goalkeeper situation is so leaky. It's so, so leaky. Um, like before, we may not have had a good defence, but we had David De Gea. You know, when it comes to one-on-one, he's got us. Now, we've got a weak defence and we've got a goalkeeper who's shaky. It's such a big problem. It's such a, such a big problem. So if we haven't got the control in the midfield with Pogba, and we, they break past Pogba and Matic, curtain. And, 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 and that's the problem. And that's the big problem. Yeah, DBG, 29, he's on a fat contract, but he's declining fast, cause, and it's scary to watch. It's so scary. Mm. Um, you're the medical doctor here. Um, some people have taken to calling him CTE. Um, that's uh, named after oh the, the NFL. <laughs> that's named oh after the injury that uh, is found in NFL players. Um, as a medical professional, medical doctor, how, how do you feel about that, Michael? Yeah. Should they lay off or is it open season on that? That's, uh, that, that, that's, that's hilarious. <laughs> it's, it's a mad one because you, you know, <laughs> it's a mad because you, you know. You, you already diagnosed that after someone died, son. So how could you be given he's alive or what? You're giving him diagnosis. <laughs> 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 because they have to open up your head. They have to open up your head. That's to open up your brain, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's up uh, your brain and take a sample, because I cannot be alive. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Elijah, you, you wrote. You wrote an article a few days ago, a really good article, where you talked about um, De Gea. And essentially, the crux of your article was, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that he spent so many years being so good for us uh, and holding the team down when the team wasn't good enough. And yes, the tables have turned, but it would be nice if we could, you know, win a few trophies to kind of thank him for his service. Um, I think you mentioned something about a silver cloud or silver lining. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Po- poignant, <laughs> poignant writing from our Elijah. Of course, of course. Um, <laughs> where do you stand now? If you could go back and write that article again, would you just delete everything and just say, get him out? <laughs> do you know what? I mean, the, it, my opinion hasn't changed. So, obviously, I, ideally, that would be the perfect scenario. But the whole point of the article was about the fact that as the last line of our defence, he was the last line of our defence. And now, like, He's not he like this. This might be his last lines for us because he might he might not even be starting anymore because he's been pathetic this season. And then even last season, I rewatched some of the mistakes last season, and then I completely forgot about the Barcelona game. It's exactly the same thing as Mount. The second goal for Messi, exactly the same thing as Mount. So this has been a continu- continual problem, and now it's like with me before I, I was always like. We need to get Henson in. And then in the summer, they both compete. And then based on that, you see who you put your trust in. Now, it's like, even like even, even, though, even though Henderson, since the restart, hasn't been amazing either, I just feel more com- confident seeing him in goal. Like, he will come out and collect crosses and he just commands his box bad. Like, the thing is with the hair is that he was... The things with the hair is that 
even when he was younger, make mistakes. They were mistakes like he needs to adapt to the league. But you all saw the potential in him with his great saves. Now we can't even, you can't even, we actually can't even trust him to, to save us. So if you don't have your big selling point and then you are regressing on everything else, you can't pass you out. Got nothing left. You, you, you can't come out to collect crosses. You're just parrying stuff, stuff away. And like, that just everything has declined to a point where it's like, come on. And then the fact is, he's, he's 29 years old. Outside of, outside of Matic, he's probably our oldest star in the team. I, I would rather look to Martial for leadership than the hair. And Martial is in his own cloud most of the game. So the fact that he's, he's on grown, his, <laughs> yeah, he's on his so own team. he's just vexed. He just wants a goal. Just give me a fucking goal, man. So so it's like the hair has grown into an experienced keeper who I can't even trust for experience or just like the simple things like for like for example where we concede to Chelsea in the last minute, just to see out a game, just to organize the line. So it's just like every single thing has just declined to a point where what is the point of even playing him anymore? Like it's getting to a point now where I'm like, like just don't start him. Like he, he, he can't start anymore because he, the fact is, is that he, he unnerves an already nervous defence. We have Maguire, Lindelof and Shaw there and we, we don't need like them being worried about what's behind them. So, I mean, in like, in terms of next season, right now, I would prefer to give Henson a chance and see if the mistakes he, he, he might make are ones where you just cast him off and say, all right, he's not good enough or, or they can be rectified. But like with me, the hair, it, it, it seems like he's done. I think, I think it's sad because he, he, basically, he basically got us into the top four twice. Just by by himself. He's twenty nine. I don't understand. I don't think I've ever seen this because obviously it happened started last season when he was twenty eight. I've never yeah. seen a goalkeeper fall off before. Their prime tends to be a bit later than outfield players. Yeah, I've never seen mm. anything like this before. Honestly, it's, it's so scary. Did he look what did you tell us? What did you tell us? <laughs> what did you tell us? Sam- Higgy sandwich. I told you, Higgy sandwich. The guy is. <laughs> He's sandwich. That's his career, bro. I told you, man. I said he started. He started rubbish. That's that's one slice of bread. And then the feeling. It was great for four or five years. Great, amazing. The girl mm. in the world. And he's come back. He's reverted back to type. He's rubbish. He will never. He's go worse up. now than he was when he first came in. Exactly. One hundred percent. You weren't making these. No. He weren't letting. He was shit, a... like, still under his arms and stuff like that. And like. Trying to catch a ball and letting it drop out of his arm and going. To his the thing was his physicality when he first came. It mm. wasn't all, all of this stuff. He would still mm. save. It was still save shots or whatever. Remember, we was on the Discord yesterday, Morel, and mm. me and me were arguing who was worse, uh, De Gea or Kepa. And De Gea made a mistake. And I said at halftime, I said, "In twenty minutes, I'll come back and I'll t- I'll show you why DDG is worse than Kepa." In twenty minutes, yeah. Mount went and scored, and. But I was so confident that he was going to make another mistake because the guy has no mentality. So the fact that he's, his, uh, he's our captain going off what like Elijah was saying, it makes zero sense because the guy's weak. Like one thing I've seen, and this is something that's been constant throughout the guy's uh, career, if he's rattled once, he's not going to come out for no balls. He's not going to do nothing. He's not going to relieve, he's got, he's not going to relieve nothing off the team. And this is why I go back to the Southampton game. There's times in that game where your keeper, your most experienced player, the captain, has to relieve the team. Whether it's the corner that they, they went and scored for, but some people said it was a flick on, or another chance, or keeping onto the ball and rolling on the floor like other keepers do and staying there for the extra you know, 10 or 20 seconds. These are things that he doesn't do. He's not calming down the team from the back, and it makes zero sense. So, yeah, I'm all Henderson, um, you know, I'm all Henderson um, to, to come back uh, to United next season because, again, like one's trending upwards, the other one's trending downwards, and regardless of what mistakes Henderson Henderson makes, and he'll definitely make mistakes. At least we get to see what he's on. But this is going to be the second year that we're going right to the wire because of David De Gea. It's ha- it happened last season. Last season was in this situation. It happened. He's the reason we got pammed out the uh, Champions League. Well, him and Fred. It's the reason we lost 
we, 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 he's a reason why we haven't, well, have we beat Wolves yet? But he's one of the reasons why we haven't beat Wolves ever. It, well, right now, it's because him we and Fred... We've them once, I think, once, a couple of times. We've beaten them a few times. The no, no, no. We've only won. It's only the FA Cup. Only the FA we Cup. We haven't beat them in the league. Yeah, they no. beat them in the league because of De Gea no. and, and Fred. And that's what I'm saying. Like, he's made too many, too many mistakes for me. And yeah, man, it's time to sell. I don't know who will sell, but even if he... Not if going we, anywhere. He's yeah, not even if we anywhere. can't... He's going to have to sit on that bench. Put him on the bench, yeah. Put him on the bench, man. He's got to be a great number two. <laughs> um, Timmy, some people are talking about bringing Romero in for the last two games. Um, is that too much or do you agree? Oh... <clears throat> um, You're a big DTG fan, so you can speak on that as well. You wanted to oh, stand by your man. Stand by your man. <laughs> du, du, du. Bro, one thing about me, I've always been a loyal guy, bro. Mm. And um, when someone shows me something that's worth being loyal, I'm going to be loyal. Um, he's obviously regressing. Um, in my head, I'm still praying that he can have a comeback season next year. But he's obviously regressing. Um, it's sad. It's very sad because he's been our best player over the last decade, bar none. So it's it's really, really sad. But um, I think we just stick it out for the rest of the season and then see what happens with him and Henderson after that. I'm not I'm not um I'm not writing them completely off yet. I know a lot of people think the first goal yesterday was his fault. I don't really think it was. I think People feel like it's more his fault because he got a hand to it. But a striker that connects with the ball like Giroud did from three yards out should never, ever miss that chance. And if the head does keep it out, everyone's calling it an excellent save. Do you know why I think people are blaming him? It's because they're holding him to the standards he's established for himself. De Gea, yeah. De Gea that was the best keeper in the world, <laughs> once he's gotten his hand to it, it's not going in. It's it the fact that you're, you're getting your... So many of the goals he's conceding are weak. I don't understand what's happened to his wrists. They're literally, you're getting your hand to it and the ball is going, is pushing your hand back and it's going into the net. So it's not even just his wrists. It's like he's slower. He, like, he, he doesn't get down to the ball on time. He doesn't do that either, so, yeah. Because he doesn't get down to the ball quick enough. Like, it's like, get it all as it's going past his hands. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So, he's getting down. Like, for, um, for example, Mount's goal yesterday. Like, he's literally got down and the ball's just gone, gone past him as he's getting down. And this, I, don't know, I don't know what it is. I, I saw an article the other day that um, um, Emilio Alvarez, um, he used to be our goalkeeping coach. He, he, didn't, he said he didn't get sacked, he quit because he didn't want to work with De Gea no more. Like, I don't know if De Gea is feeling like he's too big time at the moment. I don't, I don't know what's going on with him, but he definitely needs to back up his ideas because... As loyal as I am, I cannot keep defending this. Yesterday's second goal was comical, bro. That was so ridiculous. After I spent the whole half time defending him, within 45 seconds, that's what he does to me, bro. Ridiculous, bro. I stick, I'll, I'll stick my neck out for this guy every single time. And then time and time again, he just makes me look like a dickhead, bro. I don't know what the hell that was. Mason Mount... Should not be scoring from 23 yards out against the With well, well, that no kind of shot. In hell. Well, Especially kind of with shot. a weak shot That like shot that. was absolutely pathetic. <laughs> bro, it was, bro, it what, was I... pathetic. It's like, he's got, it's like he had money on Chelsea. It's, like, it's literally like he had money on Chelsea. I don't know what's People going on. People suggested that yesterday as well, it's like, yeah. It's, it's, like, it's like Matt Swick's in some of the goals he concedes. Watford as well. What the fuck was that first goal? It's not a Lassar goal. That's the worst like, one. No, I feel like that's the worst it's, one. It's see. literally like match fixing. <laughs> like, honestly, I don't know what's going on with him. I really don't know. I think his confidence must be shot. If he's not match yes, fixing, then his confidence yeah. is at all His confidence is shot. You know, for me, yeah, the minute I see him in camera, I'm worried. I'm shook. Like, I'm shook. I'm worried. The minute I see him in camera, I'm worried. Like, and when for he makes me, saves well, now, I'm more cross everything. Like, for me, the Bergeron one was was the worst because it made zero sense. The Bergeron one made zero sense. Because zero he tried to punch him. <laughs> yeah, it made, it made zero sense. He tried Another to punch it. it. Like, it, it, did, it didn't make any sense here. Yeah, but this is like, I wanted to bring up two points here yeah, because. Remember when I said, yeah, Palace, yeah, when we was watching the game on Discord and I said, the guy had done that save and he almost missed it. And Timmy was rating the save. I said, he almost missed it. If you look yeah, at the save, yeah, yeah, yeah he was oh, so... My God. I'm saying, that, w- that could have been another one, you know? It? 
No, but that could have been another one. But that goes off. But no, but listen, but that's what I'm saying. I'm saying, wait, I'm ready to bring up a point. I'm saying to bring up a point. Old school De Gea, that's a comfortable save. He maybe even catches that. Do you know what I mean? The fact that people are saying maybe your timing's off, that was uh, uh, that was like perfect to show that this guy's timing is off because he would never do that. Like this is like uh, well, like the things that he's doing. It, it doesn't it doesn't make any they sense it, what, it. What, what he's doing. It doesn't make any sense what he's doing. And for me, yeah, like um um I wanted to speak on that article thing. Like, was there anything in that article to say why he quit? Like because that could be a big thing. Like, um, why? he Alvarez said he quit because basically um Mendes had negotiated a deal for De Gea to sign and then De Gea then this new lawyer came came to the door and he asked for more wages and it was weird because Solskjaer was begging Alvarez to speak to De Gea to sign on for a new contract he so basically Alvarez and Mendes basically convinced De Gea oh, sign a new fee. yeah so, fee. so 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 okay. so sign so sign a new contract for this amount of wages then this new lawyer comes in Basically, basically ask for more wages. So that's the that's the whole reason why the the hair is on like three fifty k a week, okay. and then because of that, Mendes has left him. Alvarez has left him because they he basically snaked them for this new lawyer just to get more wages. Oh and yeah, look at his mentality, man. Look at his mentality. So like, get him out. So like, yeah. Do we know get how much out. more it was? He didn't go into that, that specific. Get, case, get him uh, out. Get him out. I can't even remember how much it was, but I think it was like 50k more, if yeah, I remember man. correctly. Yeah, you, what, what was he on on his last contract? Bro. He was on 250 before. He was on 200, right? Yeah, 200. I'm not 200. being funny. I'm not being funny. A man's looking out for his pocket. Like, I'm not going to get on him for it that. It says anything. It says anything. A man's it says saying everything about his... It says everything about his... It says everything. It says everything. It says everything. It says everything. And you're telling me you're going to say, no, nah, no, no, I'll just no, sit no. and take 300. No, no, no. Even though I can get 350. It says everything. No, but it's not that. I'm getting my 350. That's going to put your your long time... Agent. Goalkeeping agent uh, and yeah. come on, man, that's disgusting, man. Bro, that have you done that in bad faith for your oh, long time? That's, disgu- that's disgusting. That was his coach from Young. Is it? Oh, my God, was his coach at Atletico Madrid. That was his coach at Atletico Madrid. That was his coach at Atletico That's disgusting. Get him out. Get him out of my team, man. That's disgusting, man. I thought you said you're loyal to me. I thought you said you're loyal to me. Oh, uh, yeah, today, I know you're Don't mind him. <laughs> I'm here today. I'll put the bro, cool heads, man. Don't mind him, bro. Bro, come, listen. Do it a different way. Cool, fam. Go about <laughs> a different way. But, fam, an extra 50k. Yeah, but... Well, uh, 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 wait, an uh, extra 50k to you, yeah. But extra 50k to someone, a, a millionaire, who has who's going to do good business week, wait man. he's going to do good business with he's a long term co- goalkeeper coach since he was a kid and his agent for me I ain't going to lie that's nasty business bro they I both know. left the game, him the they, both, the they both left him they both left him like they anyway in Charlotte was that was that hold on hold on was that was that Jorge Mendes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's a money man. If Jorge Mendes is turning his back on you then you done something wrong if more money is because remember remember you can get the best deal yeah, but bro. Um, I doubt it. Well, he's get, he would have got that 300... Uh, yeah, okay. Cool. Mendes was his agent from <laughs> young as well. That, keys, bro. That's a snake. Uh, that's a anyway, big snake uh, move. We need to sell him, man. That's all I need to... We can't sell, sell him. He's business. not going anywhere. That's a business, that's sell a business him to relationship. When, when, bro, when, when, when Newcastle uh, get their billions, sell him to Newcastle. Let's <laughs> hope so. I'm at, why hasn't that deal gone through yet? <laughs> oh, no, the you know, Premier League got... Uh, Holding it up, still. Is that for human rights reasons? No, no, no. That's because of the piracy thing. They would okay. never hold, hold, hold it up for human rights. <laughs> <laughs> totally don't give a fuck about that. Oh. All right, all right. All right. Uh, moving on, moving on swiftly, moving on swiftly. So uh, the, the, the third and final player I want to talk about is uh, Harry Maguire. Um, like I said, uh, he had a weird week. Poor against Sutton. Very good against Palace, and then an atrocious against Chelsea. Um, on watching back the Palace game, I did notice that he hit his head there and he had to go through concussion protocol like you mentioned as well, Reams. Uh, and he and he uh, was the reason why he had to come off because he inexplicably came across to claim a ball he had no right trying to claim. He was in no man's land for the first goal. He was in no man's land for the second goal by not closing down uh, Mount. And he scored an own goal for the third goal. 
Um, there's a game John Walters played a few years ago where he actually <laughs> put two own goals and he missed a penalty. And I'm telling, I'm putting Maguire's game yesterday up there with that game in the Hall of Fame of shit performances. Um, yeah, Harry Maguire. Let's talk on it. Let's start with you, Reams, because you've been a defender of Maguire for the last few weeks, and it seems like the same way the players have turned their back on Timmy, Maguire's turned his back on you. What, what do you have to say about the turncoat? Turned his back on me? No, on Reams. I said the same way you said the players have let you down earlier, Timmy. Oh, Maguire oh, oh, oh. Has let down Reams. Well, first of all, I don't care about Maguire as much as Timmy did. <laughs> Look, Timmy, here we go, here we go, here we Timmy, go. Just tell me I'm right. Just tell me I was right, bro. Timmy, bro, let me finish, Just man. tell me I was right. Yeah, right, man. Anyway, um, so, as I said, I felt like, yes, last season, our defence was horrible. This season, Maguire's come in, he's played every game, he brought some stability to our defence, and we've had probably, like, the most, like, stable defence we've had in a little while. Like, 2018, we didn't really have a good defence, but we had David De Gea, who had the best season in the history of goalkeepers. So, so he saved us. But like, so, and then we went back to having a terrible defence. Maguire came in. I felt like, played every game, captain, stable, him and wan I said, I felt like he, he's had a good season. There's like, I felt like he's had a good season. Seven out of ten. These men were said, nah, Maguire's had a two out of ten season. I'm like, I don't like hyperbole. He's been good. Seven out of ten. Okay. So here's the thing with Harry Maguire, right? The game against Crystal Palace and the game against Chelsea is basically like a perfect, like, it, it, encap- it encapsulates what Harry Maguire is perfectly. He is a guy that is actually can be a decent centre-back. But when, when, when it comes to it, when it comes to important games where you need someone to go out there and lead your defence and when you're having a bad game, you need a centre-back to get you out of trouble. Harry Maguire isn't that guy. And, and here's the thing. It, Harry Maguire and De Gea is just like, it's like, I don't know, I, I usually have good analogies, but I don't know how to describe it. Like, when you're a team, you say you have a midfield, yeah, and like, say your midfield's playing poor, then, okay, if I get bypassed, you want to have confidence that your centre-back might bail you out. Then if your centre-back get bypassed, you want to have confidence that your, def- that your goalkeeper might bail you out. At, at this moment in time, we have none of that. And it just destabilises the whole team. And Harry Maguire is a big part of that. So I said he's been 7 out of 10. Then I said people was like, nah, nah. 6 out of 10. I was like, cool, 6 out of 10. His performance yesterday is one of the worst performances I've ever seen in my life from a centre back at this club, and I've seen, I've seen Chris Smalling, mm. Max, Max. I, mm. Eric. By I, was say, I was going to ask you something, Rims. You mentioned a t- sort of defender. You said he's a decent defender. How many teams in the league are you comfortable with him starting against? So, of the twenty teams in the league, how many are you okay? D- uh, Maguire will have a good game. What he'll have a good performance against? Yeah. Um, the teams that have like target men that would like want to go up against him physically like the okay. teams that have strikers that like have like quick smart movements and moving around and stuff mm. like that those are the kind of teams that like guys that have like like strikers like Aguero and stuff like that that don't really want to back into you and stuff like that mm. if it's just launch the ball up to a guy and you go up and try to head it away from him then Maguire might be cool so maybe like 50% of the teams it'll be oh. cool against but at the top end of the teams that have those quick, wiry attackers that are moving around, he just can't keep up with it. He just can't keep up with it. Even like, like Palace, like Palace, when he came up against Ayu, he did all right because Ayu was backing into him, matching him physically, and Ayu's a good player as well. But when he came up against Zaha, like there was an occasion where like the ball came into Zaha and he tried to, and he tried to defend on the front foot, close in, didn't get there quick enough. Zaha just let it roll through his legs and he was gone. You know what I mean? So that just, again, that just perfectly shows that what kind of centre-back he is. Listen, this guy costs 80 million. That's not his fault. But if you're going to spend 80 million on a centre-back, right, and we make excuses for Pogba all the time and say it's not his fault what he costs, but like, Pogba is clearly a top-class midfield player. Like, mm-hmm. anyone that eyes can see that. You watch Harry Maguire, there's no way you can watch Harry Maguire and think he's a top-class centre-back. He's okay mm-hmm. at best. 
At apologies, worst. apologies, we got it massively wrong. We that got is, it. Mm. I said he was seven out of ten. Mm. Mm. He, uh, subtract five from that. And listen, oh, I'm, listen, I'm not, a, I'm not a flip flop. I don't think he's been two out of ten. But listen, there's there's no way, there's no way I can say in good conscience that Harry Maguire is a level of centre back that should be playing for Manchester United. Absolutely no way I can say that. He's he Leicester have pulled off the best heist since Ocean Eleven. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> they have swindled us. <laughs> They have mm. swindled us because Harry Maguire, now listen, he is, I am not certain that he's better than Lindelof and Lindelof is horrible. <laughs> I did not know. And they, they're horrible for different reasons, but they're both equally as horrible. And like everyone is in agreement that we need to replace Lindelof. So if we spent 80 million on a centre-back and he's not as good as a centre-back that we need to replace, we're in trouble. And that's it's it. di- that that deal may end up being. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Deal, that deal may end up being what hampers us for the next few years because as well as spending eighty million, we paid oh, so yeah. much of it. The vast majority of it, we paid it up front, which is unheard of. Which is unheard of in transfer business. <laughs> Normally, you sign a player, and if he is uh, a player signed on a four-year contract, you amortize it, and you'll pay twenty million every single one of those years. Or if you sign on a five-year contract, the equivalent of five years, 80 divided by five. But Leicester made sure we gave them a lot of cash, a big haul, so much so that our, our cash reserves, Manchester United's cash reserves took a hit for Maguire. Bear, and now in, mind, here, bear, in, mind, bear in mind, Ed Woodward spent the entire summer negotiating that deal. And it was yeah. mad. It was mad. They, he didn't think at any point, like, okay, let's forget about this guy. Let's see what else is out there. At no point, did Damn. that anyone's mind? He's, 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 he's worth half of what we paid for him. At most. He's worth 30 mil. At yeah. most. At most. Yeah. Half of what yeah. he paid for him. At, at most. Yeah. And the I thing bet. is as well, again, yeah. he, he he suffers from like what you mentioned earlier, um, Timmy, he suffers from what um Henderson suffers from. The commentators are constantly praising him. Constantly Praising Phil him. Neville yesterday. Jeez. He's not going it's, anywhere. He's not going anywhere. And you do not win a title with that guy as you, as your one of your starting centre backs. Or he ha- or, no. or he has to be your worst, the worst defender in your back yeah. four. And you have to have a guy yeah, who's sitting in really front good. of him who is gonna lock shit up. He literally has to be that, your worst defender because if he is anything more than your worst defender, your defense ain't good enough. That back five is really bad, man. It's yes. actually really bad. And it's just too funny that we've got the second best defence in the league because that back five yeah. is actually horrible. Like, And it's so weird because up until Christmas, I think we had two clean sheets. We had two man. clean sheets throughout the whole season. And then what happened is McTominay got injured, Matic came, came in, mm. racked up the clean sheets. And since Matic has signed that new contract, he's been horrible. And we just look a shadow of the team defensively. You no, know it is. Yeah, you no, know it is. We've we've had we've had like a stable defense, and Matic coming in, we've had more control of games. So he was giving yeah. up less chances. He was giving up less chances. Mm. Yep. You know what I mean? So that's a big reason. And you obviously, past Matic, and the as well that wins like. Yeah, yeah. Most, of the, best, most, of, most of the best players in this league, everyone at every team, you'll realize that most of their best players are one of their wide players, right? Would you agree? Yeah. And we have the best 1v1 defender in the league, so... And if anyone, like, tries to pump balls into the box and stuff like that, then obviously Harry Maguire's big head is getting it out of there. But whenever, like... Whenever he, whenever he gets caught in, like, 1v1 situations and draws and stuff like that, he's just... It's a scary sight, man. He's either just... too slow, he's getting spun, he's diving in, he's not winning the ball. It's just like... Bro, like, surely you could do something else elite on the defensive end of a Dan winning headers and like he's good at winning headers but, and, but when he's in our box he can't get one on target so we don't even get to we don't even get to make the most of his heading either they even yeah. grab a, cu- a, cu- a few headers man go on Seb I feel like you guys have been unfair man <laughs> I feel like you've been I'm laughing, bro. You, no, go I'm on. not laughing. Talk being yourself up. Uh, no, Timmy, no, Timmy, be serious. Let him talk. Timmy, 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 let's see what he has to say for himself and his boy. Cool. 
because as we said, Palace, he suffered a head injury. So it was obviously concussed going into the next game. And then he was in that game as well. And then he got another head injury. Michael, you know, as you're a doctor, you know, I've read a few medical books myself. So I you doubt know that. Go on. So you would, I've, you would I've read a few medical books myself. Sebi. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, continue for time. No, I'm joking, man. I can't even defend it, bro. I can't defend it, man. He's been he's been atrocious um the last three games. For me, as I said, like I said on a couple pods ago, I said in in, in the dying time, so against Southampton, I don't care where you are, I don't care, get your head on it. You're, you're big head, you, you've got a big head, you're known for headers or whatever, Southampton, you get your head on it. I don't care, simple as that. A very earlier on against Chelsea, he was doing the physical thing with Giroud and Giroud realised that wasn't working because against Maguire, you're rarely going to get fouls because he's got an English bias. So he was fouling Giroud a lot. It was really, really physical with him and Giroud wasn't getting those, um, those fouls. As you see, all of the goals came from people not engaging. So Giroud thought, oh, cool, let me go into Lindelof and let me do my thing and, and get a goal. So for me, I just feel like, yeah, he's not good enough to be the main centre-back. It's absolutely mental. After spending 80 million, we're going to have to spend another, what, 60, 70, 80 again to go get a centre-back unless we use this data that we say we have go grab a gem and he happens to be good from somewhere, we're going to get fleas from another centre-back. And it's it, and it's not just the fact that we paid 80 million for Maguire, it's, it's the fact that these deals have a knock-on effect for other deals. So, um, you'd like English teams will look at how much we pay for Maguire and then they will price their English talent accordingly. So again, we're trying to go get Jack Grealish. Because we paid 80 million for Maguire, they're seeing Maguire's performance. Guess how much Maguire, uh, guess how much Grealish is going to cost now? It's going to cost 60, 70, 80 because they're saying, oh, he's talented, whatever, whatever, whatever. You've just paid this much. Or, or, do you know what I mean? Or say we want to go get another European centre back. Same, what, it's exactly what the Napoli um, uh, 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 CEO said. He said, if they paid 80 million for Maguire, then Kula Bali's worth 150 million. That's what he said straight away after we paid that. Do you know what He's I mean? worth so, twice as much as Maguire, yeah, so yeah, yeah that's, that's about right. That, that's, yeah. that's, the, that's, that's what, that's what <laughs> he said straight away, right. so yeah, it's yeah, a knock-on yeah. effect, yeah. isn't it? And it's the same reason why I hated Sanchez, though, because paying Sanchez 350 is why De Gea is now on 350. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, All of these yeah. deals are knock-on deals. Money because, and, now, and, now, and, now, and now Pogba comes in, he goes, you've got Sanchez 50. on 350, you've got De Gea on 350. <laughs> 350 is the minimum, minimum. I'm going to take. You can't give yeah, me 350 yeah, as, yeah, a, yeah. as your top. He's not even going to take 350. Pop, He's going to say 400 is the minimum. No, Pogba's next deal is 500 bags. Minimum, bro. 500 bags. That's his next deal. 500 bags. Mm-hmm. And we have to we have to pay it now because we've set a precedent. We've given Luke Shaw 150k. We've given we paid 80, 80 mil for Maguire. We've given Sanchez 350,000. Guess what Greenwood's going to want next time he wants to re-up? Do you know what I mean? And this is this is it. Like you, you know, like United have made a series of poor decisions from the board down, I and tweet, this I is tweet, why I always criticize everybody. I tweeted, Seb, is that every season we make a signing that sets the team backwards? Yes, I've been saying it for ages. I've been I've been saying it for ages, and people think like I, I'm definitely anti Woodward and all of these other people, these Glazers, whatever. Sometimes people say, "Oh, cool." Like, what we don't pick the players? That is perfectly fine. We can go back and forth with who picks the players, who picked this player, who picked that player. But when it, t- it comes down to negotiating the deal, yeah, which is Woodward's thing, yeah, yeah. negotiating the deal <laughs> mm-hmm. and making it make sense for the club, it doesn't make any sense what he's doing. That's been as bad, if not worse, than our performances on the pitch. S- simple as that. Our, our ability to make deals. So he, he brings in a lot of money. Kudos to him in that in that regard. But like you say... What we've done with contracts and what we've done with transfer fees, I think in terms of transfers, we're we're seen as a joke basically. We are. We're linked, we're linked to everybody because everybody knows we have the money, and our name is used for players to get new contracts and for teams to drive the costs of their players up. And if and Manchester you know, United wants your player, mm. you're gonna just chuck on another ten million anyway. And do you know what's major? Do you know what's major mm. is um, in January. 
So in January, we try to, so we're, we're trying to change our transfer strategy and we're trying to move more bullish in it. But one thing that doesn't help us is the performances of the players we've paid that much money for. So it's all fun and well saying to Bournemouth, ah, oh, give us your player now or we're gone and we'll go get someone from China. That's fine. It looks sick when you go get a goal and you bang six goals or whatever, but you're not going to go to a Napoli and say, give us Kula Bali or we're ducking when they've just seen Maguire play, the whole, play a whole season and play shit. They know we need Kula Bali. We'll say, all right, cool. We keep him. Do you know what I mean, mm. it's not the same effect. So you know, us trying to move bullish now is difficult when the players that we <laughs> so much faith in to um, are, are playing shit. So yeah, man. It's, as I said, and I, I keep saying this summer is going to be the most important summer for Man United post Fergie. Simple as that. There is nothing else. If we get it right, we can be back in two years, a year, two years. If we get it wrong, we're finished. Cool. Oh, um, and just to. Going to our final segment this week, D Day. Um, yeah, let's talk about it. So let's talk about the game on Wednesday. Firstly, West Ham, who've been in very good form. How are we feeling going into that game? Honestly, difficult, difficult, difficult. West Ham, West Ham are especially away from home. I know this game's at home. I know there's no crowd, but they're West Ham are a bogey team, a very difficult team, and. Like, Mick Antonio is going to be a problem for Lindelof and Maguire. Like, their confidence could be shot off the Sunday. He's pissing up whole back line by himself. And he's form. It's so funny, we were talking about him a few weeks ago. The, other. But the thing is, I thought he didn't score enough goals. Did he bang four against Norwich? He's scoring against Chelsea. Like, he's bang, bang in form. So, and he, he's got to be definitely up for it. And that's, that's scary. That's very scary knowing how our defence is playing. So, and we just need two points from two games. Two, we just need a, two drinks. And sometimes that can be a dangerous place to be in because you want to go for the win. And if they get an early goal now, West Ham, that changes the whole dynamic of things because we're, we're leaky at the moment. As I said earlier, you get past Matic, it's free, free shots. Just shoot. You never know. It, it may go in. And that, that's the position we're in now. It's funny. I feel more confident for the Leicester game just because I feel that we'll probably be a bit more up for it. Um, and I don't want us to go into the West Ham game. You trust, sort of you trust these guys. Do you, do you trust these guys to, to, to? Okay, you had your first team. You you could have beat. You didn't, and now everything's riding yeah. on this game against Leicester. That's not a, that's not a position I really want to be in, to be honest with you. Um, but again, you, on paper we should get it done, but I wouldn't be comfortable. Do you know what the um, good thing about our game on Wednesday is? Is that we're playing before um, Chelsea. So we can go into that game <clears throat> knowing that if we do our job, Chelsea are now looking back at us. And um, as as bad as we've been playing after Chelsea, Chelsea have been um, equally as bad playing after us. So um, I think <clears throat> we get an early goal. The guys know what what it is now as well. Like it's it's not a next day game after um, Leicester. It's the game three days on. So we know basically. Win, win comfortably enough against um, West Ham and top four is essentially secure. And I think Martial is going to have a huge game on Wednesday. I'm talking brace minimum. Now, I'm very confident that Martial is going to bring out that killer. And then from then, my next United shirt will say AM9. If he can bring it home for us on Wednesday, then my next United shirt is AM9. Fact. And 9 a.m. if you would, sir. Good. 9am, am 9 a.m., a.m. 9 uh, just get me two goals, just get me two goals in a win. But um, hey, man. I'm more confident, I'm more confident for West Ham than Leicester, um, purely because there's not as much pressure on this game as there will be against Leicester. And a lot of people are talking about how bad Leicester are, which is true. They're horrible. And I don't know if Madison's going to be back for um, Sunday or not. Not that it makes that much of a difference, but um. I just feel like in in pressure games we're terrible. We're 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 really bad. Like as um, we saw against Chelsea, as we saw against um, Southampton, as we've seen every time we've had the opportunity to close um, to close uh, men on Chelsea. So I'm more concerned for that game. <clears throat> I think if we can get one early, there's no reason why we can't go and get four or five. West Ham are safe now, essentially. They don't care. They're probably going to start being on holiday. I know Moyes might have a little grudge against us or something, but at the end of the day, our 11 players are better than their 11 players. And if people do what they're supposed to do, 
then we're going to beat them. No matter how good Antonio is at the moment, we should beat them because he shouldn't even be sniffing chances. He shouldn't be. He shouldn't be sniffing chances. If we score first because they're safe, they won't put up much of a fight. Yeah, like if they're, just, if they're starting to fight for, they might. But like if they, if we score first, they might just be like, ah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. If we score first twenty, yeah, if we could score first twenty, four five, and yeah, nine a.m. Trust that. me, it's going to be nine a.m. Trust me. I don't. I don't see us. I don't see us scoring four or five against West Ham. I, I just don't see it happening because just you know our experiences with West West Ham over the past three years <coughs> haven't been really nice. Do you know what I mean? Again, they're in a vein, uh, a good uh, vein of form, and as um, you said, they are safe-ish, but not on paper in it. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, technically, oh yeah, people say they're safe because of the goal difference, and certain clubs have to go to uh, top of the top sides. However, they're not really safe so a point for them makes them safe on um on Wednesday and as you said you touched on the Moyes point Moyes would love to 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 stick a a, a, a middle finger at Woodward he would love to do that bruv he he he, no, he sure. he's, he's super hurt at how his United stint went so if he has a chance to you know do something to to hamper that that's something he'll be he'll be doing but as I said regardless of um, all of this stuff we're saying, regardless of Moyes, the tactics, whatever, if our players who some people say are on the fringe of world-class, some people say we have a world-class player, and some people say we have very good young players or whatever, if our players can't get up to win two games, I don't care what tactic Oli implements. If you can't get up to win two games, forget about it. Just forget mm-hmm. about it. Well, Elijah, anything to add? Um... Yeah, I mean, there's not much to add, but I mean, we remember the last time we had to go to West Ham, second last game of the season. Mm. We we had to we win. Watch out to this thing again, yeah. Yeah, and they, they... It, it, it was definitely not nine a.m. that game, and then we <laughs> managed the ball. Is that me or Elijah? Well, that's, a, last one game that's Elijah. Well, that's Elijah. That's well, Elijah. Um, could you say that again? You just went really glitchy. Oh, oh. Um, so you don't want um there to be a bad a bad result in the last one <clears throat> game of the season. So, um, yeah, I think it it all depends on the start. I mean, since probably the Brighton game, we've we've been poor with our starts. Bournemouth, Villa. Southampton, uh, Palace, Chelsea, they've all, all been poor starts. So it's important to start well. Um, and we just need to... The good thing is that West Ham are going to sit back. They won't put too much pressure on us, on our defensive line. So we should be able to play out the back. And then once we're in the middle third, we're not in the hands of the horrible players in our team. So that means we are able to create chances and then West Ham as good as as good as they have been they're still defensively a bit leaky but um, yeah we, we just have to <clears throat> be worried about set pieces because Sojcek really good at set pieces and, and Antonio has an amazing leap and just Antonio on Lindelof and Maguire because that just sounds like a very a very bad thing waiting to happen. So yep. yeah, in fact, we've we've seen how they've done up against uh, uh, athletic forwards, and it hasn't been a pretty sight. Two two man up as well. Two yep. man up, and it's been sticky. All right, yep. cool. Uh, let's finish with some listeners' questions. I'll start with the ones from our Discord community. Um, I actually had to tell them to stop asking questions because they wouldn't stop. So we've got <laughs> quite a few to go through. Uh, first question is from Babs. Um, and it's a question for right now, so not end of the season. I just want shout out, Babs. Shout, shout out, Babs. Babs for real. Yeah, um, good guy, so. Proper, proper, proper. Should be supporting us, but it is what it is. Um, <laughs> this is a question for right now. Oli in or Oli out? Out. Let me let me wait until the end. In, of the in. continue for now. No, nah, for now, in. for now, Reams. Right now, I want to know. Oh, in, in, in. Okay, Seb. In. In. Michael? In. Elijah? I'll say out. 
out. Cool. That was two to three. And I will say out as well. Yeah. So free, free tie here on, on, on Mogga. Um, uh, Louis 15, player of the <clears throat> season so far. So I'm going to go around and ask you all. Uh, Michael, who's your player of the season so far? Toss up between Rashford and Martial. Uh, I'll go Rashford for the early season form. I like them in the early season form. Mm. Uh, Sebi, player of the season so far? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Rashford. Re- Reims, player of the season so far? Uh, probably say Martial. Uh, Elijah, player of the season so far? It has to be, um, it has to be Rashford for me. Mm. Uh, Timmy, player of the season so far? CTE. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Chelsea's player this season. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd say Rashford, man. I have to say Rashford. Same. I, I think. Um, yeah, he's been. He started slowly, but even then, um, like Elijah highlighted, he wasn't necessarily scoring, but he was showing that other side to his game. But you've always maintained that he's had Elijah. So to be honest, apart from Marsha, I think he's been our best player since we've returned. So you, yep. you couple that with how he was playing before he got injured, he, I think he's pretty comfortably our, our best player this season. I think just because Martial's shown a level he hasn't shown before, it's kind of, it's been stunning to us and we've been waiting for it for so long. I think this break, the lockdown, basically, Martial's given us the season now that he would have had l- next year. So for the 2021 <laughs> season, so basically you've mm. had that break. Uh, you're, you've still been in contact with your coaches, telling you what you're doing well, what you don't need to do well, but you've come back now off that long break for the lockdown. It's like, okay, I'm ready to do it now. So, yeah, long may it continue. But, yeah, again, I'd give it to Rashford. Um, question from <laughs> Akin Yemi or Yak. Did Maguire sabotage by on purpose? Do you know what, yeah? That's the first thing I, I thought of. I thought, Bayer's having a good game. And I thought, Maguire's M- 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 just come <laughs> over there just to show both of them who's boss. You, you, like, I... Like he saw that as a as like a win-win situation. You take out Giroud, you take out Bai. It's all calm in it. But nah, ugh, he he's just an idiot. So at, so at, so at the end of the day, he thought he was just going going there to dominate the situation. When really the situation was fine. It was just a stupid, very British thing to do. Yeah. Cool. Um, got a question from Usman R M. Biggest Jeff Vibes player from United. Fred. Scott Matter. <laughs> oh, no, no, who's here now? No, who's here now? Who's here now? Matter. Matter just vibes, bro. Matter is the Surely it's Lingard. Lingard. Surely it's Lingard. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Lingard isn't vibes. That's stress, man. <laughs> Damn. Just stress. Lingard, <laughs> Lingard, 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 stress. That's it, bro. Lingard, Lingard is vibes, bro. I know bro, man would is... chill with him outside. Come on, bam. Man. There is bam. Lingard stre- vibes, bro. He, he's been stressed the whole season, man. That th- there's no vibes there. I right see. Now. I he's see. Uh, matter, matter. Ap or even like Dallo when he plays like Dallo yeah, cool. Dallo yeah, kills me Dallo's bro giving like, you but he's giving you step overs but nothing goes bro it might be Dallo step still. overs <laughs> step um, overs and nothing goes bro halfway line step over <laughs> makes no sense bro but, but hey <laughs> I don't mind. I'll back I'll back Dallo still as, the, as our <laughs> our, our <laughs> biggest <laughs> just vibe <laughs> player um, got a question from Jess Summer who is going to be the next academy player to emerge for United Laird, I think. I think yeah. Laird. Laird, yeah, Laird, Laird is cold. Laird is already in the squad, right? Yeah, so he's yeah. training. He's You're training. Tough, right? You tough, right? Uh, it, it's the, <laughs> uh, it, so, should I tell you why it's, the, it's tougher in because uh, yeah. well, actually sorry not tougher in. well it is and it isn't because I would have said it's tougher in three weeks ago yeah mm. but because wan has been playing poor and if we kind of get Sancho in and stuff like that he may prefer playing with Laird somebody who's you know more attacking who's a bit more technical and also Oli has seen that teams are specifically using wan as the press trigger like they're they waiting for him to get the ball press on his touch and nine times out of ten he does something fucked up with the ball so eventually Oli's mm-hmm. probably gonna get tired of that and Laird has a chance in it because he, he, he got called up um and Williams played shit the other day even though Williams was used as right back 
uh, Fossu Mensah, he seems like he's in favour, but I really want... Um, I think Lerd might get um, a Europa League thing, and then if he does well, then he, he's got a chance. Yeah. Has he not already played in Europa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but, yeah. I, but I'm saying like the 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 second leg against um, yeah, last, last yeah, 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 yeah. Even if Lerd is our second choice centre back, he'll get loads of games. Cut right back, just right yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's say centre back, right back. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's why I wasn't angry at selling Dallo. Like I I I I know what Dallo you know is, and you know what I mean. But I don't feel What's like he's. Possible? I don't feel. I don't feel like he's better than Fosu Mensah. I don't know if he's better than Brandon Williams. Like, I don't know. And he 100% isn't better than Led. Like, so if, if, if a team's going to come in and say, I'll give you 35 million to take somebody who isn't even a guaranteed <clears throat> starter or second choice for you, why not, you know, take the money? Yeah, I hear you. Um, Sebast- Sebastian Marshall, is Oli too one-dimensional? He doesn't have a, a dimension in the f- first place. He's dimensionless. Wow. Yeah, like, like, it, like <laughs> yeah. let's keep it real. Like he's just he he just told he, he just is told the, the biggest players, just vibes player at United. Bam, yeah, he's gonna say he's Bam. definitely a just vibes manager. Big man, that's, he, nah, he, nah, he definitely just tells them to go out there and just vibe. Yeah, yeah bro. You're better than them. Like. You're better than them, boys. It's You're better than them. <laughs> That's how you said his team talk. That is what Hudson said his team talk. Go out there and just vibe. Like, that's his team talk. I, I bet you, yeah, Fergie's doing the team talk on Wednesday. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Hilarious. Seven years oh. out. <laughs> um, I think I know the answer to this, but we'll ask the questions as we always do. A uh, question from IO underscore OBS. All of these are Discord um, members, by the way. Shout out the Discord community. You lot do your thing. Make sure you're there rocking on Wednesday. Um, what's the starting yeah, eleven for Wednesday? So we'll, we'll start from the back. Who's, who's in goal? Romero. Uh, Rom- Romero. Romero, man. Wow. You, you need to kick him out. Like, is, is this what we want, or is this what you think Oli will do? What we want. <laughs> we want to kick him out. Romero yeah. was the oh, FA Cup. Okay. Romero was the FA Cup keeper, and yeah. he yeah. wanted and to win that game. And I was kind of annoyed that he didn't start. He wanted us to win that game and he brought DDG in. So he sabotaged us then. Right. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't think he was. <laughs> a sabotage job. Bro. To be fair, hey, you man. can't make as many mistakes as De Gea and not be punished at some point. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like fair enough. Romero, yeah. Romero should start. Cool. And yeah. let's start right back. Fosu Menso. Yep. Yeah, uh, Fosu Menso so- deserves it. Centre back. It's by your back though, cause see you. He's gonna be concussed, man. man yeah, yeah, that, 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 bro, that no, ma- no matter what we say, it's gonna be Lindelof and Maguire. <laughs> like, isn't it? Yeah, facts. And then who would you have at left back? If Shaw's fit, play. Him, sure, if Shaw's fit, play. Sure. Sure, sure. Um, got a question from Jess Summer, Sumner actually, or Summer Sumner. Um, do we try Fred at left back? I hey, I've heard I that. Know but I, I don't. I don't. I, I think. I think to try it now, I don't trust his position. Yeah, it's criminal, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Not just, in the Europa League in the second leg to see how he looks. Mm. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, like it, it. would be something that you would have had to try out before because one. There's one thing being left footed and you know being able to pass and whatever, but your positioning, like the headers, he's mad short as well. Like, uh, oh, I, I, yeah, I, yeah I, I, I really wouldn't trust that right now. Fair enough. Uh, let's get into the midfield. Um, what's your, how many midfielders would you play against? For me, that? yeah. For me, and I know everybody's going to vote against it, but I'd go 4-4-2 against um, West Ham. What, take your old school? No, no, no. Why? Can you explain why? Take your old school. Take your old school. Take your old school. Should I tell you why I'd go 4-4-2 against West Ham? Because although people say West Ham are going to sit back here, yeah, for me, I think Moyes is intelligent enough to say, listen, lads, you see what happens when they press. So maybe for the first 20, 30 minutes, they're going to try to press us in it. Whether they can keep that up for 90 minutes, that's cool. But for me, I go 4 4 2 and go long to Agalo for 20 minutes or f- for the first half anyway. Go you long to Agalo and see what I can pick up, mate. I'm on that, mate. Go, go, you, go. You, yeah, pick up the seconds really and, and see what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Go, go, go. Agalo! Yeah, go long, to Agalo. Go, long, go long to Agalo. Anyway. See what I can pick up from there. And then 
after probably going into that, the 70th minute, changed the formation. 70, you just going into 70, the 70th 70, minute. 70! 70! Yeah, 70 <laughs> Hello. Use Can my you be formation, serious now, please? Use my formation and then go into 4-4-3 four, four, and go from there. Yeah, no, nah, man. Yeah. <laughs> you have to. You're gonna have to just go yam. long. You're gonna have to go long, bro. Oh, man. Just present. Anyway. Just yam. Just yam. <laughs> <laughs> just yam. Yeah. Garland, man. <laughs> you're gonna have to go long. You're gonna have to go long. Um, cool. Cool. You these things like a bit so. dead serious as well. <laughs> he probably is. <laughs> he is, man. That's that, that's a scary thing. <laughs> oh wow. Oh gosh, I'd love to give mm. I'd love to give um Sebi the helm for ten games, man. Me. I, I, <laughs> ten I, 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 L's. I, I ten no. L's, bro. Ten, ten different formations. Ten tactical, different formations. I'm a tactical, I'm a tinker man. <laughs> I'm a tactical genius, bro. <laughs> okay, so we're going with a midfield three. Um what midfield three <laughs> what midfield three we go with. It's That's tough, it. man. Matic, Bruno, Tom, Pogba. Tom, no, Tom, no, 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 no. Yeah, Tom, Tom, Pogba, Bruno. I can't no, do McTominay, man. I can't, no. No, no, McTominay. I know man doesn't no, want to do McTominay, but I'm going to have, no, have McTominay over Matic. I, I, I can't. Dude, I'd, I'd rather play Fred then. I'd rather play Fred then. Nah, man. Fred's way off it. Nah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't play Fred, but no, basically, Fred's yeah. way off it. I understand the McTom thinking, but in this game, we're going to need people to come and show for the ball. And even if Matic, mm. yeah, even McTominay if Matic... can't do it. Yeah, he can't do it. And, do it. And, and even if... And even if even if Matic, yeah, like, like he's in his like down phase right now, yeah, he will still show for the ball. He's he's Matic's problem right now is when when he gets to this, is he holds on for, to the ball too long. It's nothing else other than holding on to the ball mm. too long, and his brain is not thinking fast enough. Do you know what I mean? So, it, I don't know, man. If if somebody could just gas him up for two games, bro, you he's see that Jack, Dan, well, that, Jack Dan, that, Jack, that Jack Daniels he had by his by the by the bench in that picture. If you could just swig it. And one more, just yeah. one more, bro. Just one, eight, one and eighty yeah. minutes for the lads. Forward, Come on, man. man. One eighty minutes, bro. That's all we need. Gosh, how the mighty are falling. This is just for top Fam, four, you know. It's disgusting. Jesus Christ, this is it's disgusting. Dis- yeah. It's disgusting. And then what? The front three is what? Greenwood, Marshall, Rashford, or would you guys drop Rash Greenwood? No, no, Greenwood's no, 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 for who? Yeah, Greenwood has to play, man. Oh, for Daniel James, nah, no, he's, he's a horrible man. Daryl James is a horrible man. Because oh Greenwood, uh, you shouldn't get on him like that, man. And allow, allow Daniel James, man. Why? It's not his fault, bro. It's not his fault, bro. It's not his fault, man. It's not his fault, it's, bro. It's no one's fault, but at the end of the day, we know he's not good enough. A victim. We know. Mm. We know he's not good hey, enough. Let's just leave it. At, let's just let's just leave it at he's not good enough. Like, let's not insult the young lad. You know what I mean? Like, he's living it's his dream. Like, we all would. You know what I mean? He's it's shit. You know. Lower, man. Nah, nah, nah. He is. Be- he's so bad. He's genuinely horrific. Bro, do, we, do you know what I've clocked something? We do know. I've clocked something here. Do you know I've clocked something here? I clocked here that see since lockdown. We've generally been poor, yeah, but Greenwood changes the momentum of the game. Yeah, yeah. So the, he fact has that to Green, the fact that Greenwood isn't playing well is actually a reflection on how good he is and how bad, like, like how good he is. Like, because if we, one thing, because we need like special players, isn't it? And Greenwood has proven when the momentum has been shit, he will just score and then we go out, go on a route. But because they've been like three players on Greenwood and he hasn't had a chance, it's and been they're clattering him as well. You yeah, know? They make him, they let, make him sure he mm, notices the men's exactly. game. Exactly, it's been interesting, yeah, that mm. we haven't been able to get that momentum in games because we've they've kept him quiet. So if we can just, you know, if he can grab a goal um, out of just like nothing, I feel like we'll open a floodgate. So yeah, hundred percent Greenwood has to play, man. Nah, nah. Yeah, he has to play. He has to play. Mm. Every single game, every every single minute, he has to be on the Maguire flex because oh, facts. Just his ability just to shift it and just shoot out of nowhere, like no one else has it. Like the yeah, like we. That's he, what we, that's why I think we need an, another right back to give him a to give him help. Yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah. again, yeah. when it's one Basaka, it makes yeah. it difficult, you know, because he's yeah. not necessarily giving you that space mm-hmm. that then you have to operate where the left back is coming out a bit to uh, occupy mm. him. So you've got your left back is holding in on Greenwood. You, your, set, your left side of centre back is kind of looking at him as well. And then one of your defensive midfielders is playing an eye on him as well. But yeah, mm. with that being said, lads, uh, it's a big week for us, boys. It's a big week. Um, if you're up for it, I don't actually mind doing a couple of, uh, well, post-game West Ham, we'll just hop on here. 
quickly, maybe 15 minutes or so. We'll, yeah, I'm on we'll that. Throw it on the Discord. Yeah, you might will say you're on that, then we'll, no, we'll get the that. result. And I'm on that. Has... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm on that. I'm on that. I'm on that. If you win, if we win, you're on, yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Oh, yeah. I'm so, on it's, it's, all right. Respect. Respect. So, yeah. Um, you guys will see us uh post game on Monday, and we'll, and we'll post that. I'll post that the same evening, to be honest. On Wednesday. Yeah. We'll we'll get it cracking. So, all of you, once again, thank you for coming through, lads. Two more games. Let's do it. And then we have a little break, and then we can go win Europa. Oh, <sighs> Let's all go. Right. Let's Peace. go, man. Nice one, lads. Come on. All right. All right. All right. All right. When I spit bars in a ring, man, I go hard like Stan Tan.